Hello everyone, today I'm really excited to bring you a tutorial about a super secret project I've been working on over the past couple of months. I guess it's been about six months now. Um, I haven't really made many videos because I've been very focused on working for an animation called Damien by Markiplier. I, my primary role was character artist, as you can see here. Um, I created three different characters for the animation itself, in addition to doing some um, illustration work as well. Um, so today I thought it'd be really interesting if I kind of walked you through how that animation came to be, how I made these characters. Um, I kind of want to show you uh, the very first steps to the end and how those images actually came to exist. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, um, the very first thing I did is I took a base model and I modeled that in ZBrush. It looked, some, looked kind of something like this. Um, it was kind of just like a shape. Um, I thought this would be a good place to start because a lot of the focus of the project was capturing likeness, specifically of Mark's likeness because he wanted it to continue his previous series, Who Killed Markiplier. Um, so uh, this is sort of what I ended up with. Um, and then after that, um, I experimented with different ways to create his clothing. I actually created um, this garment here in Marvelous Designer. I was kind of playing around with different tools and different technologies at that time. Um, this ended up being kind of overkill because uh, the texture on uh, the model and the painting actually is what kind of sold all those details in the end. But I wanted to show you kind of the trial and error I went through in the beginning trying to get this character to look as good as possible. So once you've imported your um, your high poly mesh into a blender, it's time to retopologize it so it can be made animation ready, so we can UV unwrap it, so that we can paint on it. What I would do is I would add the shrink wrap modifier to a plane. And what that does is it essentially sticks that plane right onto your model. And using this method, it's really easy to kind of like almost trace over your model's head. So you create this like really low poly, almost exactly perfect version of the model underneath. And you combine this with like a mirror modifier I want to make sure it's like in the middle and it's not completely symmetrical but it's close enough and like using this method I essentially retopologized the head and if you keep going you're left with something that looks kind of like this here is my uh, base mesh it's a little bit more highly high poly than I would use for say a game um, because I wanted him to animate really smoothly um, this is actually the final version of the body I ended up using. Um, as you can see, it's pretty different than the Marvelous Designer uh, jacket that I had sculpted. I, I made that initially because I wanted it to be like very realistic, um, and I realized that wasn't really uh, useful for this project. So I ended up doing something really simple that would uh, be clean to paint on, um, high poly enough that it would animate well, and um, from here, basically, he was ready to unwrap. So here is the basics of his UVs. Um, I would just mark his seam, then I would select that area, U, and unwrap, so you can see over there. And I wanted to try and make this as clean and as efficient as I possibly could because I would uh, be texture painting those details. So I guess that kind of leads into my next step. How did I create those textural details you see in those final models? So the most important part of this process was the texture painting and the hand painting that went into creating these characters. The main goal was to really assimilate them into a 2D space, make them look like they worked in an illustration because this animation was supposed to appear 2D um, and the 3D characters were supposed to kind of blend into that. So the hand painting was really vital here. And so the way I decided to do that was to do something called texture projection um, in Blender, which essentially just means that you are pressing an image onto a, a model and then painting on top of that. So um, using um, the concept art from our, our concept artist, Ashley, I will post a link to her portfolio in the description. She's really awesome. Um, you can see that his shapes match the concept art really closely. Um, and my job was to basically make him look like this concept art. Uh, so I figured the best way to do that was texture projection, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. So the first thing that I would do is that I would load that image in. So I kind of, I split them up beforehand, 
um, and this is the very this is the front of the model. So what I'm basically be doing is I'm gonna be pressing this image onto this model here. So the way that you would do that is you would go into texture paint mode. And right now there's nothing on this model. This is the UV map with a black texture underneath and nothing else. The way I would do it, and this is just like a really brief intro to this. I can post a tutorial on someone who does this better than me, who can explain it better. But basically I would just create a separate UV map that kind of was a placeholder in which I would take that image I loaded right here. I would project the UVs onto this like temporary, it's hard to explain, but it's kind of like a temporary UV map that acts as like a stencil in a way. And you'll see what this does in just a second. It's kind of confusing, but essentially I would line up the features with the image itself as best as I could. I'm gonna do this kind of sloppy right now just cause I'm trying to do it somewhat quickly. But essentially when I had something like this, I would go back to the original UV map, I'd go back into texture painting mode and I would use something called the clone brush. But essentially I'll select the image I wanna clone from, front full. I'm gonna select the UV map I made for that specific, that specific placeholder there. I wanna go into slots to make sure that I have the UV map selected because this is what I'm going to be painting onto. And then watch, it's going to kind of magically appear. Once I have something kind of like that, and I feel like, oh, I'm satisfied with that. The next step would be taking basically just like a normal brush like this. I'm using an add-on called B Painter for my brush. And what you basically wanna do is start painting on top of this to make it look a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do is just kinda paint it. I worked a lot as an illustrator before I did 3D modeling and I still do and I feel like that really contributes here because um, it's not easy necessarily easy to do texture painting it may look kind of easy but it's I'm thinking a lot about what I know from illustration over the years like where to put shadows um, where I would paint in sort of form like under this eye like that eyelid's not really there so I'm kind of painting that form in like where I should add more shadows that kind of thing So after painting for a really long time, um, and just keeping on with this kind of strategy of just like painting light, enhancing form, I ended up with a result that looked like this. This is after I'd cleaned up the entire body. I tried to retain those dark black lines from the concept art while still giving them kind of form. You can see that these like imposed highlights that really sell it as being an illustration and some of these like textural qualities. Um, and then you can see kind of in the face, I added strokes and brush strokes that made it really feel like an illustration. And all of this together really created um, a model that worked both in 3D and in 2D. And that is how I created the texturing for these models. Creating the hair was another really complicated process. Um, I don't really wanna go too much into how I did it, but I will show you kind of the result. You can see um, these are actually just a bunch of planes that I have drawn a texture onto. Let me show you really quickly the UV map of the whole thing. Um, essentially, the hairs are planes that have been shaped to his head um, that have a texture on it that looks like hair. I drew these here and I just UV mapped these onto these planes. And when you um, arrange them in a certain way, it ends up looking like hair. I can show you how it looks in render view because it doesn't look awesome right now, but you can really see that it sells the effect of hair. So after all that, after I've gotten the model approved, I went on to rigging, as you can see here. This rig is actually very similar to one of the rigs I created for my videos. Um, same thing with the face rig, I can link those videos in the description. But you can see over here, this is the rendered model. And I can control his movements with this rig I created. So you can see he's lifting his leg. If I wanted to 
and then backwards. And this is kind of the basis for all of the animation. You can see he's got a whole mouth of teeth in there. You can even see that his eyes move. The computer's lagging a little bit. And this is how we created all of those really vibrant expressions that we would then paint over. So I wanted to show you the process of posing the character before it is painted and animated. And after they were modeled, I would pose them and uh, we would take an, a rendered shot of it to be painted. So I wanted to show you kind of how I did that. I would basically try and find the appropriate angle after I have positioned them in the camera and set the dimensions of the render to be the appropriate side. Here I wanted it to be a square frame render because the final image would be based on that. Let me also show you the uh, storyboard I was working from. This is what our art director Thomas Brosma made. So I would look at something like this and I would say, oh, okay, I need to render this to be painted to appear like this. So I would go back and try and arrange the windows so that I could see both at once and kind of copy the storyboard. So the rest of the process was just me posing the bones to try and match the initial image, you know, um, folding the arms up, trying to match that angle as well as I could, kind of tilting the spine down and adjusting the head. I'm going to show you the final product. This is what I would end up with. Something more like this. And I had a couple of settings, um, including render layers, where um, I would put the background on a different layer so it would render separately. I would put Damien on one of these layers and I would put the background on a separate layer. Um, I might make a separate tutorial about that later. Um, I found that I got really quick renders. I'd make sure it was on transparent so that the background didn't interfere with the model itself so you could easily paint behind it. And that's just clicking this checkbox. Um, as you can see, there's the background, and in transparency it's gone. I would turn on progressive, and what this does is that it renders um, the whole thing kind of in stages. I'd make sure that these values were relatively low, they didn't need to be very high considering they were going to be painted over and the final render wasn't integral to the quality as much. So from here I would um, render this, and as you can see it kind of renders the whole thing and then increases the quality of it. I'm going to let this render so you can kind of see the process of the render itself and how I save it and get it into Photoshop ultimately. I would take something like this, press F3 and I would save it, go into Photoshop, I would find it, it's the one I just saved. So it would look something like this. What I would end up doing then, I would copy it, I would take um, the storyboard and I would underlay it, I would paste it, I would resize that to kind of fit over that storyboard as best as possible. After that, um, it would be basically ready for painting. We would essentially kind of take this and color adjust it to be more accurate to the scene itself. This scene is supposed to be like bluish, so we'll, we would color adjust it. Um, I would usually import a background, um, and all of our backgrounds are painted by um, an artist named Ashley. Let me show you. She painted these lovely backgrounds. And so I would kind of take this as like a color cue. I'll be like, okay, so it's going to be greenish in tone, so I would color balance him until he fit in with the scene, and then I would treat him with some like levels. And every, pretty much every illustrator that worked on this kind of did the same process. We just worked on different shots a lot of the times. Something like that, where he looks like he works in the scene. So after I brought it in like this, I would essentially try and paint the light. Um, and so in here, the light would be coming from the bottom, so I usually have a multiply layer and black airbrush, kind of drop the intensity and start painting in 
the most important shadows that will help define where the light's coming from. And after that, I would just do my best to try and establish a sense of light using different layers. But at some point I would take um, the brown brush and I would decide this is perfect and paint on top. A lot of times we would take the mixer brush and just kind of blend some of these. So after doing something like this, if I felt, you know, this was adequate, I would take like a rim light, I would go here, and something like that. Um, and then at the end of all of this painting, I would have added like a shadow and I would end up with a result that looks something like this. <clears throat> and this is the shot that was used in the animation. I would actually separate the light so that it could be animated in After Effects, so that it could flicker. Everything was sort of separated from each other for that reason. The hair maybe sways, and then we finally have the breath that is animated coming out of his mouth. If you're interested more in the After Effects side of this and kind of how that worked, my fiance Ian Malin was one of the main animators on this project and he made a really cool tutorial kind of breaking that process down. If that interests you at all, you should go check that out. I'll post a link in the description. Huge thanks to everybody that worked on this. It looks amazing and the reception has just been incredible. Um, thank you all for watching this and I hope it was helpful and I'll see you next time.